In this video, we'll learn how to show a nav bar that lets the user switch between routes without entering the URL themselves. This is a simple video where we're gonna show a bunch of links. The user clicks in the links and switches between different routes, all right? So here's how you do it. Uh, in my app component, so here's my router outlet. Uh, let's say I have a heading here, h1, my app. Okay, so this is gonna show up at the very top and this is gonna stay consistent no matter how much uh, how you switch routes. But what I wanna do is specify like a list of links here. This can be a fancy uh, bootstrap a nav bar or just whatever CSS you wanna apply. I'm not gonna apply CSS here. I'm just gonna provide a simple list of links uh, that the user can click on and switch between profile and settings, okay? How do I do this? Well. You can specify a list of, you know, a set of links here, href equals, uh, I'm gonna put hash over here, I'm gonna show you what that link is gonna be. Let's say I'm gonna have a home, which is my first link, and then my second link, is going to be settings. Okay, now if I were to switch here, I have Two links here, it looks really ugly, but it's fine for now. So we have home and settings. Well, what can I do over here to make the user go to these two URLs? If I click on settings, I want it to go to settings. Well, what I can do is just specify the URL here, slash home, and then here, slash settings. This should work, right? Refresh the page. I click on home, I get home, click on settings, I get settings. This is cool. But now here's a problem. You notice here, this is actually doing a full page refresh. I'm gonna go to the network tab here and you can see. Um, I click here. You see, it's actually loading the whole page all over again. This is not what we want. We are building a single page application. Now why is it loading the whole page all over again? Because when you do something like this, href equals settings, this is actually instruction to the browser. You're telling the browser, hey, load this URL. The browser faithfully loads that URL and then that URL happens to map to our spa and our spa is loading the right view, which is great, but you don't want the browser to load the full page URL. The browser doesn't know that this is a spa, okay? So it thinks of this as just another link that it needs to make a server request to and then load it and all that stuff. So you don't wanna do this. You want to have Angular change the route. You don't want the browser to make a request. Now, how do you tell Angular to change the route? The way to do this is by using a directive called router link. Router link is a directive which takes in an, a value which is the route that you need. So here, the route is home and uh, here, router link. is settings. Now notice what happens. I'm gonna switch back to the browser. When I click on home, it goes to home. I click on settings. You see here, it's actually not doing a full page refresh. It loads immediately and it's super snappy, right? This is great. So this is how you specify route links in Angular. If you have some place in your markup where you want to redirect to a different link, you use router link. And uh, this can be decorated by CSS. You can use any of the bootstrap menus or the foundation menus, uh, but the A anchor tag element should have this directive and then you map it to this thing. You can also use a uh, class property resolution for router link. So let's say you have, um, in your component, you have a member variable which says uh, home route. This is kind of like a contrived example, but I'm just gonna show you how this works so that you can know how to do this when you need to. Okay, so let's say you have a couple of variables here, or let's say you're dynamically loading uh, the routes from here, right? So you have uh, member variables which contain the value. Well, then you can actually do a lookup using the same convention that you're 
normally used to. So we'll do something like this, and then the value will be home route. Is that the name I called it? I forget. Yeah, home route and settings route. Okay, so I can use the member variable resolution to look this up. Okay, so now what's going to happen is nothing changes, but it's actually looking up from the member variable. While we're here, actually, let me show you a typical use case of how this is uh, this normally works. So most of the times, you don't want to hard code everything in your HTML or in your uh, in your component. So let's say I have your routes array here, and then this contains a link name is going to be home and then URL is going to be home. Okay, so you have defined an object which contains everything that you need to show in your navbar. And this is going to be settings. So in this case, you can dynamically render this navbar by using that property, routes property. Okay, the way to do this is to use, can you guess? ng4. Let route of routes. So I'm basically looping through this array. Now the URL is going to be uh, the route.url and then the label is going to be route.link name. So this is going to be route.url and then the label will be route.link name. So this way you've kind of consolidated the configuration to this object over here and every time you want to add a new menu item you just add an object over here and then the loop is going to take care of rendering the right number of links in the menu. So let's test that out. Refresh the page. And now here you see it is doing the same thing, but now it's triggered by, it's configured by the ng repeat. All right, so we can add sub navs. Uh, that's where the parent and child thing comes in. So let's say in the settings page, you want to have the user navigate between profile and contact. You can do pretty much the same thing over here. Um, I'm going to copy this over to the settings component. In your settings component, I'm going to have a sub nav over here. And then the route here is going to be a bit different. It's the settings route that we need to configure. I'm going to create a member variable here called routes again. And I'm going to have profile. It's going to be profile and I'm going to call this contact info and this is going to be slash contact. And now, do you notice here, this has child navigation. So you see, I can switch between these two. This part of the app does not change. It's only these child components that are being switched and loaded as you click on stuff, right? This is pretty cool. So in this video, we've looked at how to configure a bunch of links, uh, how to implement a bunch of links that let the user choose between routes. And you can, again, as we've seen, specify links for the parent route and links for the child route. You can do all that using the directive, which is the router link.